the wind. Oh! What happened? I don't know. I think it broke. Good morning guys, welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday, January the 24th, and my name is Daniel, and you're watching Triple R Farm, and welcome back for another video. I didn't mention on the last video, it slipped my mind, but the two uh, case mechanics from H&R, Big Joe and uh, Sparky, they're great mechanics, and uh, they always do a very top-notch job. I just, it just slipped my mind to uh, not get their names out there, but yeah, big thanks to them yesterday and uh when their report comes out on both combines when i get that email i'll go over it with y'all and kind of tell you what each combine needs and uh how much it's going to cost but um part two of the grain auger repair starts today and uh that's what we're going to be working on first thing this morning then after that we got some hydraulic and air filters we never got to putting those in the uh both combines so we'll be doing that later on today Wayne may be doing some painting on the uh, stuff I welded up on the grain cart. Uh, also, the irrigation, I got the air filter. We got to put in air filters and all the irrigation motors. So, um, that's all I know right now. You'll just have to watch the video to see what else we get into today. So, let's get it started. Part two. All right, first thing I gotta do before we get ready to put it in is on this dog right here. This is what we were hitting on trying to get this thing off, the old auger. Anyway, if you can kind of tell, got kind of bent right here on the end. So what I'm gonna do is lay some beads right here, a weld, and uh, build this back up, and then we'll grind it back to that angle right there. Just kind of clean it up, basically. All right, so the plan is, obviously we got it hooked up to the forklift. We're gonna lift that end up all the way as high as we can. The uh, bottom right here, dad's gonna get a rope. The plan is I'm gonna get up in the grain cart and uh, hold on to that rope and I'm gonna have to pull this end of the auger all the way into that tube. And uh, I don't know if I can, don't know if I'll be able to do that. It's quite a pull, but um, that's the plan right now. Come on down, let it go on down here. 
get your rope. You got about six inches before it touches. All right, that's it, man. Oh boy, may have a big problem. Augers sticking out. Looks like the new one's a little bit longer than the old one we took out. It's got this bushing on here. You see gears on that first lip, don't you? Right. Maybe they got the wrong auger. That little bracket right there, it's got two bolt holes. That is supposed to be inside that tube bolts onto the inside wall that's what holds the top part of the auger in place and you see how much we're sticking out we ordered the bottom auger and we got it in the hole but it's too long it's out. yeah we, we've got the new auger and put everything on it and put it down in the hole and notice it. The hanger bearing at the top is sticking out. Yeah, okay. So. We ordered the new gearbox too. When we ordered. Everything okay with the gearbox? Haven't. Is yeah, it? It, it looks okay, but uh, we haven't bolted it up. Yeah. Just find that order. Okay. So, it looks like the, the wrong lower flighting did get ordered. So, uh, the one you got is longer than the one that should have been set. That's correct. So, okay. so we'll have to send you out a new one. Wrong auger. Now we gotta pull the sucker back out. We're gonna do it outside. We're gonna do it with our Komatsu loader. We're not gonna do it this forklift again. Okay, James and Wayne are going over there in the valley. They're going to get the Komatsu loader. We gotta put the boom on it. Gotta get the tractor out of here. And we're gonna take it into the other lot and we're gonna pull it out of there just like we did a couple of videos ago. So hopefully it'll go well. He got it. <laughs> James got it somehow. He got it with a little pipe. <laughs> All right, that was it. Gotta save that. Bolt back on here. Oh man. Now it's ready to be shipped back. Well, we got her out. She's ready to be shipped back to J&M. Uh, Dad, in the meantime, is working on getting the right auger ordered. But I'm telling you, if the thing looked just like the old one, I never, the main thing I was worried about was like the diameter of it. And um, I mean, it was probably like five inches shorter, but J 
just looking at it with your eye I, anyway we never cross our mind that it was the wrong length but anyway they're ordering the right one when it comes in we'll take it off the pallet strap this baby down and we'll ship it back but um it's a lot easier using that komatsu loader with that boom that's the way to do it so when we go back in we're gonna use a we're gonna use a loader so all right now i gotta go get the uh, 8250 combine we're gonna start changing the air filters and hydraulic filters on it i gotta bring it up there for james and mark wayne's gonna come out here he's gonna get to painting uh where i welded up those braces and um yeah that's where we are right now doesn't matter probably do mine that's that one yeah do mine first in case they want to come get it You're kidding me. <sighs> Not gonna do it. Dead, 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 dead. Well, I guess I'll be uh, taking my combine up there first. Oh my gosh, batteries, batteries, batteries. We always have battery trouble on our farm, but uh, what I wanna ask you guys is what is the best battery out there to use on farm for tractors, combines, etc. Uh, let me know in the comments what your opinion is of the best battery out there because obviously we can do a little bit better job of uh, the batteries we're getting. So, yeah, leave me a comment. Let me know. Let's see if my combine will crank. Watch it not crank. Money. Beautiful. What was wrong with the mower? The pulley on the hydrostat? Um, it's the drive huh? pulley that drives the wheels. Mm -hmm. The idler, little old idler went bad. And I uh, got, got to change both idlers and then this belt is shot. Here it is right here. That's the idler that tore up. Uh, huh? 84, 21, 72, 29, cab. Mm. 68, 2, cab. Okay. I'm going to show you how much play in. That's it, man. They caught it. So it is time to change it. 39.25, yep. Missing one air filter. The inner air, secondary air on the engine. And did not get it in the order. We'll have to reorder that, and then while we're ordering, we'll order that bearing on the beater bar, beater drum, whatever you want to call it, and uh, get them coming. This is the tightest bolt from the whole combine. All right. You got something? You got something. It's caught. Gonna need all the king's horses and all the king's men. And don't hit your hand if it breaks. Oh, oh, you're about to break the wrench. That thing's welded. That's all right. It broke the other one. Oh my gosh. That one's gonna give. And the wind. Oh! What happened? I don't know. I think it broke. I'm gonna go past and go out go on the outside. Not going up. That's how tight it needs to be. Be sure you put the band back on, laying the new one beside the old one, 
and you see where these nuts are, you get the other band looking like it. Because I think you can put it on backwards. Does it have some glue on it? Let's talk back here. I need a little, what's it called? A close look. On my combine, when they did the inspection, this was the only thing they found was this bearing right here on the beater bearing, beater drum, whatever you call it. Anyway, had a little bit of play in it and they caught it. And uh, But that was the only thing. The only other thing to this combine was he said I had some chopper knives in the back that had flipped back. Not sure what he means. I don't know if they can trip out, trip out or something. But, um, Anyway, I may crawl back there and look, but that was the only thing he had like it was. It was no big deal just to put them back in place, but anyway, they must have tripped out, but that was it, so we'll have to take a look at that. But anyway, we can go ahead and fix this. We've done this before. No big, uh, no big deal for us. And I uh, saved a little money too. Do what? <laughs> See what it'll do. see what he was talking about i thought he was talking about these chopper blades were were uh kick back but what he's talking about is these blades right here the stationary blades these are where these blades right here go in between them and that's where it does the chopping right here but as you can see right here i got a couple of them that are not sticking up um so that's what he's talking about these right here never had that happen so now I know which blades he's talking about. We just got to figure out how to get them back set. All right, let's see what we can uh, scrap up for the uh, basketball shots. Uh, looks like we're going to have a couple of different basketballs. We're going to have a plastic cup, Wendy's bag, Coke can, Coke bottle, Thomas got a water bottle back there. So uh, yeah, let's uh, see what we can do. Best out of five. bad all right next thing on the list i think i've uh talked myself into um 
tackling the chopper knives. Uh, combine's already in the shop, so it's a good time to go ahead and do it, and uh, you can mark it off the list. But it's gonna be tight, but let's see if we can get it done. Holy cow, there has to be an easier way of getting these blades back set because only th only thing I could think of, there was just no way for me to get these blades. They gotta fit in this little slot right there. That's what happened. Something came through, kicked them out. They come out of this slot and then they're just dangling. But for me to work in there and get this blade back in that slot, it wasn't happening so the easiest thing i could think of was take this whole bracket off one bolt holds it get it out here get the blades back set and then all i gotta do is bolt that back on but um i'm sure there are easier ways to do this and i'm probably doing it completely wrong so leave me a comment and uh let me know what i'm doing wrong and uh what's the best method of uh, getting these blades back set i did figure out though if you uh engage these blades make them turn up in there where they're doing chopping um i was i just did that i just engaged them and it looked like you can get to this bolt that's holding the bracket on looks like you can get to it a little bit easier so i did figure that out but um we're gonna get these blades set back in here and uh get them tightened down and then we go back in the hole and we bolt them up So uh, yeah, we can mark that off the list. I'm glad I went ahead and did it, um, even though it was a pain in the rear, but um, it's done. So my combine, all I gotta do is get that bearing in and uh, that one air filter and uh, she's ready to go to field. So uh, let's get out of here. So guys, that's probably gonna be the end of this one. Um, but before we go, I told y'all a couple of videos ago that I was gonna kind of have a crops broke down of uh, kind of what we're planting of what and uh, we have got something on paper, but uh, me and dad are going to meet this afternoon again, go back over it. So we're probably going to change a couple of things on it, but I'll tell you kind of how we sit right now. So soybeans are going to be our biggest one. We're going to be 51% uh, soybeans this year. They just going by the numbers on our budgets. Now this is on our farm. Everybody's numbers are different on their budgets on their farm, but 
going by our budgets on our farm soybeans by far uh look the best so gonna be 51 percent beans um then the next one was corn came in at uh 22 percent um they look good uh, a lot better than last year because nitrogen prices have come down we were at 900 dollars a ton last year uh right now we're at 600 so that makes that makes corn look uh pretty good again so the third place crop was uh grain sorghum it came in at uh 17 percent is what we're going to plant on our farm uh the reason we're going to be doing it is going to be planted mostly on the places uh we have deer problems so we're going to take sections of fields go in there and where the deer are hammering us hard we're putting grain sorghum so 17 percent grain sorghum uh the very last one will be uh cotton cotton just looked the worst out of every commodity that we were thinking of planting it really got pretty scary there uh when the prices start going down and we're thinking the price of cotton is going to be in the 70s this year and uh 70 cent and um going with our budgets it was just a huge it was the biggest risk and uh, we're trying to eliminate those big risks so anyway it's only going to be 10 percent 10 percent cotton on a farm this year um but that's the way it shook out right now the only things that could change on this thing cotton probably will not change it's probably going to stay at 10 percent um corn could go up grain sorghum could go down and beans could go up so corn and beans could go up in acreage uh grain sorghum the only thing we're questioning is um where we've got a lot of grass problems that's where we're getting a little worried about grain sorghum so those acres could go down um depending on after we meet and you know figure this whole thing out but that's where we are me and dad are gonna uh try to hammer it out some more this afternoon um and we'll see where we are but anyway thanks for watching the videos guys y'all have a great day great night and we'll see y'all on the next one guys we're out